We all know the heroin epidemic has grown worse over the years. There's a new form of heroin out there on the streets that's killing people. The Midwest has seen a huge increase in heroin overdose, and they believe in these communities that it's linked to heroin laced with something known as carfentanil. Now, what is that? It's an elephant tranquilizer. Whoa. It's in the fentanyl family, which is in the morphine family, but the problem is it's 10,000 times as potent as morphine. So what of course is happening is people who are addicted to heroin or maybe even trying for the first time, they may think they're getting a certain dose, but this is killing people almost instantly because again, if you're talking about something 10,000 times as potent. It may be good for elephants, it's not good for us, no. trust me. <laughs> what we think is happening is that this elephant tranquilizer is coming in from Asia and it's being cut in Mexico, crossing the border. Problem is you go out in the street and you get heroin, you don't know. So you have no idea, unlike, when we give morphine in the hospital, we know exactly, okay, let's start with four milligrams, see what happens. With this, you literally have no idea what the dose is. I do wanna bring someone in who's boots on the ground. We're now joined by Hamilton County Commissioner and Chairperson for the Heroin Coalition, Dennis Dieters via Skype from Ohio. So Dennis, first thing I wanna ask you is where you are now in your county, how bad has this car fentanyl problem become? Well, we're starting to see it on the streets and we've finally got the baseline to be able to detect it. That's it's such a potent drug and I think we all understand how powerful it is that we weren't able to have the, the testing capabilities until just recently, but we've, we've pulled some doses off the street and I think we're in a position now where we can start to get on top of it. Are you a little surprised at the people that you're finding that are using? It's not just one segment of, of society, it really is, is everybody. Right, and, and it comes from our prescription drug problem over the last two decades. It's, it's transferred into you know, the suburbs and crossed through racial and gender lines. Uh, it's unfortunate because you know, we're seeing a spike in overdoses. Overdose deaths have doubled in the last two years, and, and we're also seeing a spike in calls to children's services. People not afraid to overdose with their kids in the car. People overdosing in, in hospitals when their children are having medical procedures done. Really frightening emergency crisis stuff that needs to, needs to be addressed immediately. Now, I understand you all are using terrorist tracking systems for the drug dealers. So I'm curious about that, but I'm also curious. <laughs> If these, if these local dealers, when they get a batch of heroin in, if they themselves even know if there's car fentanyl in it, I'm just curious your thoughts on both of those. Well, first and foremost, we, we had to, by necessity, transfer and, and in addition to our terrorist tracking, you know, start to track drug dealers, overdoses. That's been effective. We're, we're getting drug dealers off the street. But as far as getting the car fentanyl in a position where we can find where that's coming from, obviously, uh, and we're just seeing this on our streets now. Uh, and, and it's something that our tracking systems have been able to get on top of, but with the testing that's available now, I think we're gonna be able to, to start to pull it off the streets. And Dennis, is it true that you're, through this investigation, learning that you can buy this product online, that anyone can just go on a computer and order this product? You can, and, and it's, it's usually coming via the U.S. mail. We're working with federal agents, uh, local agents, to make sure that we, we stop the, the processing and the transfer of that over our border and into our state. Well, Dennis, we applaud you and your community for being so proactive. <laughs> the scary thing about, when you're talking about heroin or heroin-like substances, it's so hard to stay ahead of it yeah. because there's constantly, we know when you buy drugs on the street, you don't really know what's in it. You may think you're getting one thing and you could be getting something else entirely and there's constantly things are evolving. People are figuring out new ingenious ways of making things stronger, cheaper. Uh, certainly the most important thing is at the end level user, you always have the power to make a change. If you're struggling or you know someone who's struggling, we're gonna have a lot of resources on our website uh, because that's the one way you know that you personally can be safe is just don't use it um, and of course I've always said this the strain on hospitals and ERs is legit but in many ways it did it all started oh. with doctors indiscriminately writing opiate prescriptions and sadly that's that's how a lot of this began